Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Meeting House Church. We're so glad you're joining with us today. My name is Nicole Smalley. I'm one of the Emerging Generations Associates here at Meeting House Church. I work primarily with middle school and young adults. And we'd love for you to check out our website to see all of the middle school and young adult activities we have coming up this summer. Things like service projects and water park trips, canoe trips, and lake days soaking up all the summer fun together. Now before the service begins, let's reorient ourselves with the online worship experience. Check out the description below to find helpful links for you to get the most out of today's service. You'll find PDFs of our handouts, links to learn more about our community, and even ways to submit prayer requests. And of course, you can always find these things on our website, meetinghouse.church. One exciting thing later today is we're having a special brunch as a way to celebrate all of our volunteers from this past year. Now I know if you're joining us online, you probably won't be able to join us in person for lunch today. But I wanna take a moment to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have given so generously of your time and energy this past year. Bouncing back from a pandemic, launching a new name, it's been a big year and you have stepped up big time. So thank you. Now for those who have more recently joined our community or who are looking to get more involved, an easy first step is by texting connect MC to 55498. Or if you'd like to learn more about ways you can volunteer virtually, send an email to online at meetinghouse.church. Now as we're getting ready to start in worship this morning, send us a message in the chat and let us know one thing you're excited for about this summer. We're so glad that you are here with us and from all of us at Meeting House Church, welcome.
Good morning and welcome. My name is Jeff Lindsay. I'm the senior pastor here at Meeting House Church. We're glad that you have come today. We're glad that you're joining us online. We show up to church today when we wonder, does God care? Is God with us? Does God hear our prayers? Is God working through the prayers of the saints? Is there a reason to have hope? The answer is yes. And I declare to you from Psalm 136, O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of our gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Even when we can't muster the faith that we need, God is faithful and God has met us here whether it's in person or online we gather in God's name trusting mustering the faith that God has given us holding on to the hope that God will be with us and lead us and guide us if with that thought in mind let us turn our hearts to worship let us point our minds our hearts our very souls to God and let God do God's work in us and through us I invite you to turn to page one Page one, as we sing together, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Please be seated. I probably shouldn't say this, but over 30 years ago, back when I was the youth pastor, I got a chance to preach a couple of times a year. Every time we, 
we preached, we had to choose the hymns for the day. Being the youth pastor, I, I didn't spend a lot of time in the hymnal. So if you remember back that far, if you've been around, you might recall this song showing up almost every time I preached. It's a great song. It's a powerful song. It's a song I knew. You know, as we come together in worship, one of the things we get to do, whether it's in person or online, is that we can put our hearts together, put our minds together, and we can pray together. We can exercise our faith. We can say we believe. We choose to believe. And we then entrust our prayers into God's care. I know as we gather in this hour that people are coming with all kinds of things on their hearts and minds. They're coming with the burdens of the world. They're coming with the burdens of their life. They're coming with their concerns for those they love. Let's turn now to God. Let's trust God and see what God might do in and through our prayers. I wanna give our congregation a moment just to pause, to pray for those things that are on your heart and mind, to give those things over to God with an expectant heart, trusting, seeing, looking for what God will do. So let us pray together. Gracious God, we offer you our thanksgiving for all the blessings you so freely give to us. As simple as the birds of the air or a cup of coffee that welcomes a new day. For the gratitude we feel when we remember the ones we love. Grateful we are for all your good gifts. Gifts that are easy sometimes to see and those that go unseen those blessings we recognize and those we fail to notice. We know your work in our life is bigger than we are mindful of. But we're grateful for those connections that we feel, that we see, we experience, that again, directs our hearts and our minds, our very lives towards you, God. So in this moment, hear our prayers of gratitude for the things that you do do for us. God, in the quiet of these moments, we intentionally turn to you, hoping to hear your voice speaking into our lives, gracious words of love and forgiveness, of meaning and grace, that you would help us to refocus our lives on the things that are truly important in this life. God, help us in this hour to focus on your will, your ways, the things that will matter beyond this day or this week. Lord God, our thoughts move to those whose problems weigh heavy on our hearts today. We live in a world where fear and chaos and violence often seem to overtake the beauty of life. We find ourselves shrinking in anxiety, consumed at times by fear, yet we believe that you are the one who calls us as a church and individually to stand up against the evil in the world for what is good and for what is right and to bring your will, your purposes, your meaning to the world around us. Help us to live your will and your ways. Come alongside your people in this very hour, O oh God. We especially ask in those moments that each know in our own heart and mind, those times of need, that you would come, minister to us, encourage us, hold us up, lead us in a way that we can follow. Help us to manage our fears in such a way that we might continue to do that good work you've called us to do. There are those among us who have who know the challenges of chronic pain, the uncertainty of tomorrow, the weight of unresolved conflicts, families who are facing very delicate procedures in the next couple of days, 
People who want to feel hopeful but are feeling hopeless. Come to us, God, by the power of your spirit. Today, we especially lift up those in our midst that need your healing hand. Be with Brenda Marshall and David Yates and others of our congregation who are not quite feeling the way they want to feel, who are concerned about the tests that are coming this week. Bless them by your presence. Comfort them. And for those who have faced loss in these past days, who feel the grip of grief, we ask that you would comfort them and encourage them, especially be with Pete Southerd in the death of his uncle. Be with the family of Roy Wine and the family of Edie Norquist and others who still feel grief in the loss of loved ones. There are many of us who are carrying concerns that need to be offered to you and then left in your hands. Give us the courage to do just that. Help us to release our concerns to you, knowing, believing, trusting in your goodness. God, as we envision the week ahead, we know we need your wisdom and your presence. So God, lead us to seek you today and every day that we might be transformed by your spirit into the likeness of Jesus in whose name we now pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into trial, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the king and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, as you were coming in today, you were handed a bulletin, and many of you I saw in the common drop these on the way in. So if you don't have one of these in your bulletin, you might want to stop at the connections corner and pick one up because it has some of the highlights of what we are doing this summer. Matter of fact, if you want, you can just stop in the connection corner and ask a question or two that you might have. And if you're visiting with us, if you're new, please, please stop by the connection corner. Let us know that you're here so we can greet you properly and maybe give you some information about the church. If you're worshiping with us online, just scroll down to the bottom of the of the screen and you'll see some of these same announcements and so you will be in the loop of what's going on. A Couple of quick announcements. First is we are having a little brunch that you're all invited to after this service. Yeah, we're gonna focus on volunteers and be thankful for all the ways that many of you, most of you serve in the life of this church. We wanna pause kind of at the end of the season and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Obviously we couldn't do it without you. And then have a chance to sit around some tables and enjoy some food and enjoy each other's fellowship. So plan to just stay after and just hang out for a little while. Also, uh, we've been announcing these last few weeks, we're doing what we call summer park picnics and play. Summer park picnics and play. At first you thought, oh, that's just for people with young kids. And, and at, you might be okay with thinking that, but we want to change that mentality and say, you know what? We are going to focus on some parks around the Twin Cities, and we are going to invite people to come and play. If you're game, you can get up on those swing sets and play. <laughs> but you can come and just meet with some of our church members, some of our folks that are part of our community, and you can use those as an opportunity to spend some time in fellowship together. So there will be some updates and announcements throughout uh, the weeks to come on our website, and we'll try to announce those things uh, from week to week as well. Another chance this summer for us to get together is what we call backyard barbecues. We have a few of those this summer, a chance for you to sign up online and then enjoy somebody's backyard. I know I'm doing a bunch of work in my backyard right now in preparation for some folks who might be showing up later this summer. But go online, see if there's a date that would work for you. Sign up and come again. A chance to get to know some folks, a chance to... Um, spend some time in fellowship with one another, maybe even eat some good food. So, Some of you are wondering why I'm just here by myself, because that's not usually the case. 
Sarah Wilhelm Garbers is going to be coming to preach, and she's going to be talking about crossing over. She's going to actually have to cross over from the Great Hall because she's actually in the alternative service right now doing two wonderful baptisms. We have two families, uh, the, the Watsons and the Cregans, who are having their kids baptized today. She is doing that, and then at some point she's going to pop back in here. If I do the call to generosity a little earlier in the service... It might be because I haven't seen her yet. Just a little, little behind the curtains there. So, uh, last thing. I just would encourage you to, to go online, go to our new website that's been redesigned, see what's happening in the life of this church. If you're not already signed up for our e-news, sign up for our e-news. And that way you'll know what's happening in the life of the church. You'll know the places that you want to get involved and you won't miss anything. Is that a deal? Awesome. I love it when you guys all agree with me. Well, this is the time where we get to send the kids off to God's garden. Do we have some kids in our midst? We'd love to have you come up here and join me on the platform. They might have already gone there. Oh, here we go. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. We love it, we love it. You're like saying, why does it have to be me, Griffin? I'll, I'll stand right next to you. You get to go hang out with Ainsley on the way in a second. But we get the chance, Paul Rodoy, our wonderful chorale director, is going to lead us in our God's Garden song, and then we'll send him off to yeah, see we know Ainsley. This song, we know this song pretty well, so I want to hear all your voices, all right? Including you. you got to sing. Okay. Ready? Come, oh, come, come to the garden. Let's say, one, two, three, say, have fun, Griffin. One, two, three. Have, have fun, fun Griffin. Griffin. We love you. So brave, so brave. I'm sure some of you figured this out, that they were saying to themselves in as we were organizing this service, there's no way we're going to let Jeff lead that song. So we had to bring in a professional in order to do that. But we love Paul. We're so grateful for him and the work that he's doing in our midst. We're grateful that as we pause in this service, surrounded by like-minded people, God's spirit can fall on us and bring a peace that is beyond our understanding, beyond where we find ourselves in everyday life. And we have a chance to offer that to each other. Let's stand and pass the peace of Christ to those sitting around us.
The scripture reading today is Acts 16, verses 6 through 15. And I will say up front, there's a lot of names of cities. And I've practiced a lot. And I, <laughs> and I asked Christian for pronunciations, and he said he didn't know, but he would guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if... And, I was going to say, if you know and I butcher it, you can let me know later. <laughs> Acts 16. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We, may, we, we remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a, a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who were gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us, she was from the city of Thyatira and a, de and a dealer of purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Well, Janet, the thing of it is, it's actually written in Greek, so all of us get it all wrong anyway, right? We're saying it in English, people, so I'm just saying you did great. That was my uh, joke, but not very funny. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad to be with you as we continue in worship. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we give you thanks for how you have crossed over and continue to cross over every day and every minute to meet us. We give you thanks for the story of the early church and your work in it. Might we likewise be a people who listen for the invitations of your spirit, that your good news might continue to spread throughout the world, changing us and changing everything. It's in Christ's name that we gather and pray, amen. Well, I'm so grateful to be able to be with you today and to have made the proverbial crossover um, from our other service that we are hosting this morning as well. And you got to see a picture of the sweet little baptism that we did this morning. And I'm so grateful to be here with you and for the ways in which God is at work in your lives and, and in our community. This passage from the book of Acts in Acts 16, I think is a great one for us to be able to consider as we think about what it means to be the church on mission, what it means to continue to be a people who cross over. And so what I wanted to invite us to do this morning is we're gonna actually go through, um, just slide by slide, uh, a little bit of the passage together, okay? So you already got to hear it once. Um, but I, I want us to pause and just spend a little bit of time with this passage. A little bit of context again for what happened just before this in Acts chapter 15. In Acts 15, and if you'll remember, there's been this conflict in the early church about really who gets to be included. Okay? Is this a gospel that's only for some people? Is it only if you have the right ethnicity, if you're Jewish? Maybe the people in Jerusalem are more important than those Gentile outliers, etc. 
Well, by now we've officially settled the case. The gospel is for everyone. Everyone throughout all time and all of history will now forever and ever believe that. <clears throat> Some people need to read Acts 15 again, I think. But, you know, that's how the Spirit works, continuing to transform all of us. So that's just happened in Acts 15. And now Paul's mission in earnest begins to spread, to bring the gospel to people that are outside of not just Jerusalem, Judea, but truly, as the Great Commission invites us, to the ends of the earth. So at this very moment, as was read for us by Janet, originally what happens is Paul and those who are with him, they think, okay, we're going to go this direction. They think they're going to go to the east and the south. And basically, at each turn that they're trying to make, they have a clear sense that that's not the way that God wants them to go. And that's the first thing that I just want us to pause and think about, is that sometimes God invites us in unexpected directions. Have you ever had a moment like that where you're like so sure this is exactly what it's going to look like? This is exactly how my life will unfold and perhaps it didn't go exactly that way? Now, the thing of it is, is um, and Greg Meland will appreciate this, when I was a single human, not, not dating or married anyone, I was quite sure what I thought the man I would end up would be like. Turns out he was not Andy Garbers. But in case you're wondering, spoiler alert, I did marry Andy Garbers. And when I had married him, though, if you see a picture, you would not recognize him. His hair is super short, he's all clean cut and all these sorts of things. And I always had thought I would marry a rugged mountain man. I just thought that's who I would end up with. And I got this like real guy who played sports and had short hair. Now, I'm super grateful that I ended up with Andy Garbers, but it wasn't originally the way I thought that the path was going to go. Spoiler alert, folks, his hair grew out. He looks a lot more like a mountain man now. <laughs> uh, but, so sometimes God does invite us in unexpected directions. We think God's going one way, or we want to go one way, and, and it's another way, actually. So how do we be a people who continue to be open to the God who takes us in directions that might be unexpected? The second thing that I wanted us to consider looking at chapter 16, verses 9 and 10, is this is when Paul has that vision overnight, right? He's been trying to go different places, and the doors just aren't opening for him. And one night he has a dream, and there's a man in it from Macedonia who's pleading with him, we need some help. Will you come over here? And at this moment, that's the time that Paul and those who are with him become convinced that this indeed is the way that God wants them to go. It's just that sometimes God speaks through unexpected voices. It was this man calling out, we need some help. That that is where and how Paul and those with him heard an invitation. That might not have been how they thought God would show up, but here God did in the voice of this Macedonian man saying, come on over and help us. Makes me wonder whose voices might be unexpected to us whose voices might we think God wouldn't show up in a dream and, and help us to hear? Whose voices right now are crying out for help? How can we hear those voices that cry out for help as the voice of God? You know that story about how the person who's in a house and it's flooding, and they're praying to God, and they're like, God, if you would just show some, come up and show some help, I'll totally take it. And so God sends a person who's on a boat and is like, hey, it's flooding. You want to get on the boat? And they're like, no, 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 I'm waiting for a sign from God. And then comes the helicopter. They're like, no, 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 I'm waiting for a sign from God. And finally, they're like on the roof. And God's like, did you not get the memo? You know, right? God speaks through the voices of people who can be unexpected, but the ones who are saying, help us. How might we hear that as the voice and the invitation of God? Then as we continue in the passage, they set sail, and they end up there in Philippi. Now different folks will wrestle about what is the translation here. What seems clear is that Philippi at this time was one of the major cities of influence in the Roman Empire. Okay? It was an important place. It was the opening to then the gospel going into Europe and into the West. It happened through this city and that place. Now, sometimes there are places, I think, locations where we think God can't possibly 
do anything from there. Remember the question that was even posed to Jesus? Does anything good come from that place? Uh, It turns out Jesus did, so pretty good, right? But often God will work in the midst of places or situations where you don't think good or God's life could come from, and yet it does. How can we be a people who likewise don't act like some places are the only places God shows up? God doesn't just show up in church. God is present in every building and every place and every city. And our work is to join with God in any place to help bring God's kingdom forward. The Roman Empire wasn't the bastion of the way to be the kingdom of God, but God worked through that empire to bring about the good news of life and justice and freedom in Christ that the world could know. How can we too likewise see God as the God of baseball stadiums, paths in the woods, and also places where there's a lot of pain and suffering a lot of violence, and join God in bringing God's kingdom into those places. As the story continues, the disciples, they end up there, and they're, on the Sabbath, they gather at the river, a place of prayer, and there were women who had gathered there. Now, you might have already noticed this. This might have already popped up on your radar. But this is a pretty unexpected place. I mean, Think about the stories we've already heard from the book of Acts. Paul keeps going to the synagogues. He keeps going to the established religious temples or places of deep thought. And this is a new place that God is showing up. This is where Paul goes. It's an unexpected place where these women have gathered to pray outside of the city. Shouldn't he have gone to the center of commerce? Shouldn't he have gone to the equivalent of the house of lords or commons? Shouldn't he have gone to the synagogue? But he went to this place. We don't know why, but it's an unexpected place. And there, that is how the gospel is brought into this new community. How likewise, again, for us, can we continue to discover and worship God in places that might be unexpected? Some of you know some of my favorite ways to worship God is actually I I love listening to music. So I'll be in my car and I have all my windows down and I'll have my hands out the window. And it's like my favorite thing to do and I just, I like love that. And it's one of the ways I commune with God and worship. But it's not everyone's thing, right? But it is for me. It's an unexpected place. Oops. Okay, this one's really fun, I think. Do you remember that dream, that vision that he had? Anyone else notice this? It was a man from Macedonia who was in his dream. So wouldn't you expect then that a few verses later, the person who would show up would be like, hello, I'm the man in the dream from Macedonia. I'm the one who invited you. You were supposed to come here. No, it's not him. In fact, it's a foreign woman who's from the east, the area that Paul had just tried to go, but the door fell closed there. And here she is. She's actually over in Philippi. And that's the person who Paul runs into in the story that we are told is about Lydia, who is there in that spot. Think of this as a fun invitation to consider how God raises up unexpected people. I don't know if you've ever had the experience. I've had this especially when I was younger, where I would be the person in charge, and someone would come in the room and they would ask for the person in charge. And then I would say I was the person in charge, and they'd say, no, I mean the real person in charge. Sometimes that's because it's unexpected people. The person in charge hasn't always looked like a person like me, right? And especially when you're in your near 20s, you don't look like that. Uh, Joy from Farinita will often say that, right? Like, she's the person who started Farinita, but people will be like, okay, so who started Farinita? Well, I did along with Anita, you know, in an homage to Anita's work. But yeah, but really, right? So how do we continue to recognize that whatever our age, whatever our identities, whoever we are, that God shows up and raises up unexpected people like you and me. We're not waiting for heroes to come save us. God is waiting for real people like us to show up and to love, to do God's good work in this world. It doesn't have to be someone better or smarter, just us. That's how God does God's work. And then as we continue in verses 14 through 16, we learn a little bit more about Lydia. 
a worshiper of God. She was listening. She was from the region in the east, a dealer of purple cloth, a business person. Her heart was open. And she got her whole household, of which she must have been in charge of, to get baptized. And she invited them to, and prevailed upon them, in fact, to come to her home. A couple observations about these verses. God likes to work through unexpected means. What I mean by that is I know all of you have families. You have or have had jobs. You have hobbies. Those things, those parts of your life, they matter. We'll talk about this sometimes. That our faith doesn't exist just on Sunday mornings. Whether you're a lawyer or a doctor, a parent, a friend, a member of the Lions Club, whatever it is, this person who sings. Each of those spaces are places where each of us are invited to show up as people who embody the love of Christ. Just like happened with Lydia. Lydia was a real person, a woman, a business person, a head of her household, a foreigner, and through her, her purple cloth dealing, she became a gospel dealing person, right? And that's part of the beautiful power of the gospel, is that it's in the midst of our real lives where we show up and lead and live and love differently. That's our call as the church, to be a people who are known by our love. In the midst of our real stories and identities and the dailiness of our life, and that's what happens with Lydia. I also, not shockingly, love the fact that the gospel comes through Lydia. That God's good news is spread through unexpected people. For her as a woman to have been named at this time, to have been the head of a household, that wasn't a super normative thing, okay? It's a big deal. Likewise, it's a big deal today when the gospel comes through unexpected people named you and me. But that's how God has always worked. Jesus wasn't born as the king of the universe in an overt way that everyone noticed. Jesus was born right in Bethlehem in a stable. And through that place, God changed the whole world. And God is still in the business of changing the whole world through people just like us. And it's not until we breathe our last breath that God is done doing work in and through us. So we continue to be invited to be a people who cross over. Paul could have gone over to this, well, he could have gone to one of the other places and said, forget it, God, I don't care what, you know, I th I'm going to go there anyway. But when he went over to Philippi, he could have come and he could have been like, I'm going to just do everything, folks. I'm the one who knows about the gospel. God met me on the road, not you. He didn't do that. When he crossed over, he showed up in such a way as to trust that the spirit was a spirit for everyone and a spirit who would work through everyone. We likewise are invited to be that kind of people, a people who anticipate that God might continue to invite us in new directions. What those are, I don't know, I'm not God. <laughs> but God will continue to invite us to new, into new directions. How can we be open to that? Also, as we cross over, what does it mean to listen, to actually listen to people? to hear them and trust them and believe them in what they're saying. Like the man in the dream, hey, we need some help here. And listen and honor that as God's invitation. To be a people who go to new places that are unexpected, trusting that every place God is already at work and working with God there, looking for and recognizing new voices even as they might sound different from ours, trusting that the God of the universe is at work generation to generation. One of the things as I was working on this sermon, I was actually thinking, well, I was thinking about the whole sermon, but I was thinking about this, 
And actually, Mary, I see you over there. And one of my first conversations when I was here at the church, my second week, was with Larry Laka. And he told me about the dream and the vision that he had had for this building. And as we've been talking about the building and missional hub, like, that's the conversation. I don't know what the, the space, I don't know where God's going to invite us next. I don't know what we'll discern collectively. But there was a dream that was birthed in this community about how this building would be for our neighborhood. And we want to continue to live into that invitation and dream. Some things will look the same. Some things will look different. I don't know all of that. But anticipating as we cross over that those voices are connected to the dreams that God has birthed in us throughout time. Welcoming new means, right? They usually went to the synagogue. Sometimes you don't go to the synagogue. Sometimes you go to the place right outside of the city where people are praying. Where are those places in our time where we're called to show up? Honoring the whole person. How can we honor the whole person? Meaning Lydia, right? She's a whole person. She's a businesswoman. How do we seek to understand how God is at work in all the different parts of the body that is us? And then being a people who expect transformation. Lydia was open, and God met her. And then how do we just let go and trust that our work is just to show up and be God's presence, to love to speak the good news, to come alongside of people. But our job is not to fix, to save, to heal, because as it turns out, we can't do all of that on our own. That's not our jobs. But to trust the image of God in the people who cry out that as we come alongside of one another, that God's work will indeed continue. And so as a church, we are invited in the way that Paul did to be a people who cross over who build bridges, who walk across them, and who trust that this God of the entire universe will continue to bring good news. Some of you may recall from this story that at this moment, after Lydia invites them into her house, this is truly how the gospel moves into Europe. Who but knows if we cross over what God's good news will do next. So might we join God in that work. Will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks that in Jesus, you indeed crossed over and met us. God, you know that sometimes figuring out how to show up in this world in the midst of pain and suffering and in the midst of violences, in the midst of war, in the midst of just everything everyone is carrying. God, sometimes we don't know where to go, let alone how to go or how to show up. So God, we pray that your spirit will go before us in all things and would work within us that we might be a people who dream new dreams, who listen for your voice through the voices of others, and then who join with you in trusting that your good news of life and love and freedom and healing and of a new kingdom, that no matter how foreclosed the future seems, it never is for you are the God of all things and all living beings and all time. So God, might with, we join with you in this moment to be a faithful people who cross over and who love by the power of your spirit. Might we be your church on mission. We give you thanks in all things and I give you thanks for this church, for these people. In your name we pray. Amen.
and a thousand tongues laid deep in your lungs to race to the sky. Don't lie to yourself, oh my soul, love your God. Don't lie to yourself, oh my soul, love your God. Deep in your heart You feather and tar Your folly and fear Expose them all For the fools they are And the world comes clear Don't lie to yourself oh, my soul, love your God. Don't lie to yourself, oh my soul, just love your God. Love your God. Your worries will never love you. They'll leave you all alone. But your God will not forsake you. Don't lie to yourself, oh my soul, just love your God, love your God. That was beautiful, Vivian. Thank you so much. Thank you for your generosity in sharing your, your gifts with us. The other day I was at uh, my favorite store, Holiday Gas Station, and I was getting uh, some lunch, which included a little tray of vegetables. Now, don't get too excited. It had a big thing of dip with it, too. So, But it was opened, and the cashier, uh, cashier said, you know, you should probably go get another one. And there were like four or five people in line behind me. And I'm like, oh. So I go running over there, and I go get another one, and I search to make sure that one wasn't open. By the time I got back, I had made these people wait. So I thought, 
The least I can do is I can buy the next guy his drinks. And he's standing there with two cold drinks in his hand. I said, I'm going to get his as well. And he goes, no, you don't need to do that. I go, no, that's the least I can do. So then I pay. Well, as I step back to gather my stuff, well, he turns and pays for the people behind him. Who then in turn and paid for the person behind them who turned and there was nobody there. It was just a reminder that some little gestures sometimes, just the little things that we do together can make a big difference. That's what generosity in the life of a church can do. Us putting all of our gifts and abilities together can make a big difference. My friends, as we think about stewardship of the life of this church, one of the things that I want to remind you is it's not how big a gift that you might give to the life of this church. It's that we all have skin in the game, that we're all investing in this ministry, investing in the work that God is doing through us. And so I invite you, as we think about this call to generosity in this service this day, just just ponder that, think about that. How do I use my gifts of talents and uh, treasures for the good of the work that we are trying to do together? And God will use that and bless us and bless the world around us. There's lots of ways you can do that, of course. You've heard this so many times. You can go old school, you can write a check and put it in the box out in the common, you can certainly go online, you can certainly use your phone, there's lots of ways to do that. But more important than that, think about the ways that you are invested in the work that we're doing together. And God will bless us going forward. Let us pray. God, when I mean that you'll bless us, meaning that we get to participate in the work that you're doing. You'll bless us because we'll be able to see you at work through us, using us, the gifts, abilities, and talents that you've blessed us with to make a difference in the world. We long to do that. So God, receive our gifts, however we offer them, and bless them in your name. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand. Let's sing together our final hymn.
Well, indeed, may Christ be our light. So grateful to be able to be church together. And on this day, we especially are excited that we get to celebrate that we are church. And we want to invite everyone to join us for brunch after the service. It's for the whole church where we will especially thank those who have volunteered and given so generously of their time this year. And again, everyone is welcome to be there. Um, and we would love to have you join us for that. Okay. Now then, receive this blessing and benediction. May the God who in Jesus who crossed over be the God who meets us, who encounters us in the journey of our life, that we might go with God's spirit in and through and before and behind us to bring the good news and to live that. Go then in that love and by that spirit as we go as one body. Amen. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you at brunch.